It's another flashlight because we all love flashlights. And in a previous video, I looked at this very basic one that was notable for using a 14500 lithium cell. And you can swap that. You can put a one out of a, shall we say, a street lithium device into it, a salvage cell, and you can basically double its battery capacity. This one has a small pouch cell in it. And this one, if we take a closer look at it, has a lot more circuitry. It's got lots of transistors and it's got a proper charge chip. It's like, it's decently designed. So let me demonstrate the modes of this one uh, and then we'll take it apart in the usual way and reverse engineer it. So if you just click the button once, nothing happens. If you press and hold it, it goes into flashlight mode, comes up at full intensity, and then when you let go, it goes off. If you double click it, the Front light comes on at the last used intensity. It does store that intensity and it's got low, higher, higher and highest settings. To turn it off, press and hold. If you triple click it, the side light lights, notice how the little green light lit there. That's the battery indication light. It just lights briefly while it's uh, changing modes. And uh, it starts off with white. I think there's a strobing one next, just so you know. So I'll turn it to the side. There's the strobing mode. There's the ultraviolet mode. And this time, well, you can see, oh, it's pulsing modulated. This time it is ultraviolet uh, or near ultraviolet. Then it's got the red and uh, it is pulsing modulated. But then again, uh, the next mode, I'll warn you again, it's going to be strobing because I think it's the... It's the strobing and then it's the full-on police effect that people want for some reason. Not sure why people want that. It doesn't seem like a good idea to provoke the police by using their privileged uh, light colour scheme. Uh, long click turns it off again. It doesn't store the setting. It always comes on at the white for the side light, which is sensible enough. There is a little keychain holder. There are a couple of magnets. Where's something to stick it to? They aren't very big, but they do support the weight of it. He said dropping it. I think if you did it vertically, it would support the weight and definitely hang down where you'd probably want it most dangling down. Maybe not, but it does support the weight. It's it's not a very heavy little light. So disassembling it will most likely be the usual approach. It's got a port, a USB-C charging port. Um, so the first thing you do is you pull the plug out of that port because that would stop it sliding out. You can take the end cap off to reveal the total internal reflection lens and the LED in here and a little reflector cup. Oh, is this got another reflector here? The next thing you do anyway, is you pull out the button. That's the easiest way to do it. I've tried it before with the button in situ. It doesn't work. Is this going to come out now? If that's got a little reflector there because the circuitry isn't going to go through it. Let's try. Let's get a screwdriver and shove it gently by the switch. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. There's a little reflector cup. And here is the LED. Looks like one of those Cree-like type LEDs. Well, they just, they call everything a Cree on eBay and AliExpress these days. Righty-ho. So I shall now, I'm looking at the little LED here. It looks like it's a, is that a dual chip LED? I, I could just take the picture and be done with it. It is a dual chip LED. Uh, I'm going to take a picture of this reverse engineer it, and then we can take a look at the circuitry. So I'll do that right now. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. I've done some tests, and the only test that's not complete yet is the lithium cell capacity, but it's on its way. It's going to be around about 100 milliamp hour. Let's zoom down in this. And make sure it is in focus. It is in focus. What do we have? We have the charge control chip. There are no resistors for telling a smart USB power supply that it's connected to a load, so it won't attempt to charge it in many instances. However, a just standard USB-A to USB-C lead will charge it fine. It's got a generic LTH7 type charge chip with a 2K resistor and a voltage divider that signals to the chip that it is connected to a USB supply and also it can signal uh, that it's in the state of charging. The microcontroller here controls the LEDs via these transistors and this MOSFET. 
In the case of the main LED, it's got a couple of 2-ohm resistors. Um, the other one's rather odd. I have an oddly placed 2.2-ohm resistor, except the red LED, which may have been designed originally to be a gallium arsenide LED, because it's got a higher value resistor, but it's odd that it's pulsed modulating this. It's strange, but it's doing... Um, it has a couple of indicator LEDs that don't give you a lot of information, to be honest. They're really just charge status indication. Um, it didn't start doing anything fancy in my tests. Maybe it needs a while to actually do it, but it didn't start flashing to show the battery was running low when I turned the voltage down. But I did turn it down quite quickly. Um, and a button signaling, and it's notable that all the control inputs are on this side, um, and then the outputs to the LEDs in this cluster are on that side. That's the only thing that's on that side. Uh, okay, let me show you the schematic. And then I'll show you the uh, current draw at all the different modes. And it's interesting, when you put it on at full power, although it was very bright, that's the only mode that it will start regulating down quite quickly. I did not see pulse width modulation on the main LED, but I did see visible pulse width modulation on the red, and bizarrely high pulse width modulation, like just basically hardly on it all, on the uh, ultraviolet. Very strange. So here's a USB supply in, here's a potential divider with a 20k and 100k resistor feeding over to the microcontroller so it knows when it's plugged into USB. There is the classic LTH7 battery charge circuit with a 2k resistor which probably equates to about 500 milliamp charge current, is that about right? I think that would be about right. Um, there's a lithium cell, which I'm going to guesstimate is roughly 100 milliamp hour, probably a wee bit more, but that's what I'm getting so far. Uh, there's the two indicator LEDs, just for charge status, each with its own resistor. And then there's four sections of this circuitry. Most of them have a 2.2 ohm resistor, but the one with the red LED has a 4.7 ohm resistor. And bizarrely, the placement of the resistor is odd. It's actually in the emitter of the NPN transistor. Normally that would be up here. It's almost like they're using it in a different mode because the voltage will rise up in the emitter and... Uh, it will, maybe it's some sort of regulation they're using. It's hard to say what they're doing there. It's a bit odd. It took me a while, it was a bit of a puzzle. It took me a while to work that out. Then there's the main white LED with two 2-ohm two resistors, so just 1-ohm effectively because they're in parallel. And then an A2SHB MOSFET with a 10K pull-down resistor and direct drive of its gate from the microcontroller. Anything else to say about this? Not really. It's all fairly textbook and properly done. I tested it at 4 volts, and I tested it at 3 volts. I tested it right down to 2.6 volt, which is the point cut off. The quiescent current in standby when it's off, I couldn't even measure it. It wouldn't show up in the 2000 microamp range. Nothing showed up. That's good. So at 4 volts, which is pretty much a fully charged battery, the high beam was 420 milliamps and very bright, but it progressively stepped down roughly on the... Bench power supply, look at the current display, it would level off at the current, then it would step down in the current. Not really visible to the eye, I noticed, because it does it in a lot of small steps, but it gradually steps from 420 milliamp down to 42 milliamp, so it only goes down to a tenth. If you want more intensity, uh, you can select medium, and it will just stay at 106 milliamps. I didn't leave it a super long time, but it certainly didn't step down from that. The low is 23 milliamps, and the super low is only 10 milliamps, which is quite nice. Not 10 nanoamps, as it looks like I've written there. Let's make it look more milliamp-ish. Uh, the side LEDs, the white was 64 milliamp. When it was strobing, it was a 50-50 mark space ratio, so it was 32 milliamps. Red was 60 milliamp. The red strobing was 30 milliamp. UV was a very low 11 milliamp, because it was pulse and modulating. And the red and blue, it goes through loads of different sequences was averaging out roughly 30 milliamps. At 3 volts, the main LED dropped down to 136 milliamps, uh, dropping down in steps. It still does so at that voltage, 13 to 13.6. And the other LEDs were about 35 milliamps, 7 and uh, 2 milliamp. So as the voltage drops, you're going to get quite a long run time in this lowest level. Quite good. The white was uh, well, pretty much half what it was before-ish, Except the UV, which went down to 1 milliamp, um, but the other one's more or less roughly half-ish what they were at 4 volts. Um, 
And the pulse width modulation, although I couldn't see pulse width modulation on the main LED, I could see it on the red and the UV, which I think showed up in the video earlier on. But there we have it. It's a logical and interesting approach. It's much more traditional, like a proper design with good software than this thing was. Although, to be fair, this thing, despite its re it had really bad charging circuitry, literally the charging circuitry in this big fat one with the, the uh, disappointing capacity cell, it wasn't good charging circuitry. It dropped down quite quickly to about 30 milliamps. So this thing is going to charge very quickly compared to this thing. But this one at least did give you warnings when the battery was running low. It's super minimalist. Can't believe the lack of circuitry in this. It's ridiculous. And this is just a, a much better design. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I don't normally say that, but I'm doing a little test at the moment. Regulars to the channel will be surprised I said it because I really normally don't say that. But I shall update the description. I'll put all the currents and uh, information down in the description and uh, also update it with the final uh, result of the lithium cell test. But there we go. This version of the LED flashlight, and I'll leave a link to a listing of it, but shop about and look for those multiple transistors either side of the LEDs. They're the clue of which one it is, although it doesn't guarantee you're going to get that. But um, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below.